here's the information we've got. We're told that there are N sweets in Hannah's bag and that six of them are orange and also that she takes two sweets out, one sweet which is orange and she eats that and then she takes out another one and that's orange as well and they're both randomly selected out of the bag and we're told that, told that the chance that that would happen was one third. And then, suddenly out of the blue, you're asked this question. Prove that n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. And not surprisingly, lots of people are saying, what on earth has that got to do with Hannah's sweet? So, this is a classic problem where you're presented with um, things that seem to be not connected and you're thrown into lots of uh, potential confusion by this. So you have to start with saying, what do I know? And the first thing that we're told is that she takes out an orange sweet. What was the chance of that happening? Well, the chance of it happening is six divided by N. There are six sweets out of N, so it's a fraction. There's a six out of N chance of getting an orange sweet. Having taken one sweet out that's orange, what's the chance that the next one is also going to be orange well, there are five oranges left and n minus one sweets left in the bag. So those are the two events. Now, another thing that GCSE students are being expected to know is that when you have two events like this, the chance of both of them happening can be worked out by multiplying them together. And what we get when we do that is 30 divided by I'm going to multiply it out, n squared minus n. Now that was the chance of her taking two orange sweets out, but we're told that that was one third. So 30 divided by n squared minus n equals one third. And no one tells us to do this, but this is what's being expected. Let's now rearrange this equation because it might end up looking like something more familiar. So let's multiply both sides by three. So the third becomes one, 30 becomes 90. 90 divided by n squared minus n. Now multiply both sides by n squared minus n. And now we've got 90 is equal to n squared minus n. Well, there's only one more step which is to take 90 from both sides, and we get n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. And that is what we were asked to prove, so Q, E, D. Each of those steps is fairly routine GCSE maths. What's unusual is that there was an expectation of being able to string them all together with no clues as to that's what you were supposed to do. And that's what has made it a much harder question than most teenagers are used to.